So, this is courtesy of High Snobiety, and it's a little feature, um, a sponsor story. So it's not anything to kind of write home about, but it features my guy here in Preston, somebody that I've always been a big fan of, somebody who I was lucky enough to meet a very, very long time ago when he used to do his blog. And when I used to have my blog called Stop Begging, that I essentially jacked his entire theme off of. If you remember my blog, you remember that I possibly did steal his entire theme of what his blog looked like to do mine. I'm actually going to try and get it up on your screen here so I can maybe show you what I mean let me see if I can get up on art is it archive right how do you do archive sites let's see I think it's archive sites but let me see if I can get it up I'm pretty sure I can get it up on my old website here I think it was called agostino.co.uk or something lame like that and it was on a blog spot or a blogger and like an idiot I'm pretty sure I deleted it like on the back end so a lot of my posts and my writings have unfortunately gone the way of the dodo but let me see if I can get um, a snapshot of it on the past so you can definitely see what it looked like before. But I essentially did copy what Heron Preston did on his website and just kind of jacked his theme of what he did. So you can see how much I was kind of looking up to the guy and trying to emulate the things that he was doing in my own little kind of way. And back then I was probably doing it because I was actually out. I did care about things a lot more than I do now. I was kind of out trying to impress and make friends and connections shit. And nowadays, you know, I couldn't care less, but... This is a snapshot taken from 2010 February. Let's see if it's got the theme overall so you can maybe see. Because if you're around then you'll know what, you, when you see my theme, you'll know exactly what I took from here in back of the day. But let me see if you, if it kind of loads up. It's loading up now in the background. I don't want to put on screen before it takes. Yeah, there we go. This is definitely it. And if you know, you know. So this is definitely taken um, from Heron's kind of uh, blog and what he was doing back in the day. And I kind of did my quote unquote flip of it and how he had the flicker rolled into the banner on the side and the pictures would always rotate or they'd automatically generate different ones. My flipping old Flickr account there, Tronix, my old name on the forums back in the day, loads of posts about stuff I was doing back then. So clearly you can tell I was um, already infatuated with a guy and doing my own thing to kind of pick you off the back of it. But one thing that I thought was funny about this, just to kind of speak about, was that this is obviously a story that he did um, tying into, what's the watch brand? I'm not familiar with the watches. Um, Odemar. Odemar Pigot. Pigot Odemar. Or APs, as people usually call them in raps and shit. And he's doing this cool little story, right, with them. And clearly... It seems like they're kind of gearing up for a creative collaboration sometime in the future. We're definitely going to be able to see that. <laughs> but I was wondering here, in this interview, did they mention Kanye West's name here? Let's see. Because, okay, nothing of West here. Let's see if they did yay. No. Employed and other words, but nothing to do with yay. The funny thing I want to mention about this overall was that I think we need to give Heron Preston his props. This story of Cycle is basically a fluff piece and a brand piece. We don't necessarily need to care about that too tough, but congratulations to him. And I can't wait to see what watch he ends up making with AP because I'm sure it's going to look absolutely amazing, especially if he puts his little Heron Preston twist on it. But we need to give this guy props for staying completely out of the whole Kanye drama. He has done nothing in terms of making a statement. He's done nothing in terms of putting his hand up and offering a word, you know, trying to in trying to basically um, what's that word called translate or trying to basically offer a different opinion or just basically trying to offer a different side you know alleviate people's fears he's done absolutely nothing he's just kept on designing he's just kept on sharing his stuff that he's doing i saw a post recently where he shared a post of one skater kid wearing his 3d printed shoes at a skate park and it the first time you know 3d printed shoes has been worn at a skate park blah 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 blah, blah. and he's essentially just pushing his brand out there and not paying any mind to the whole kanye thing even though this guy is intrinsically linked to kanye in the same way that you would think you know a anyone else associated with him would be who was kind of spoken up now i don't want to mention people's names i don't want to get them involved too but it just needs to be said his ability to stay out of the drama his ability to just not get involved and kind of mind his business is something that's admirable and i think it's interesting because some people could argue that heron was the master and the kind of you know the champion of mining other people's business back in the day he was always really curious his blog was always kind of like you know it felt like a a really kind of 
a diary of somebody who was trying to find their way through the scene, trying to figure stuff out, asking loads of questions, tapping people, like he, to the point where he even was willing to sit down with me back in the day when I'm, you know, just doing my thing and being a bit of a nobody and hanging on and whatnot. And he was kind of interested to kind of speak to me in that regard. So clearly, clearly, uh, this is somebody that's clearly curious and plugged in. So for him to kind of go out of his way to not get involved with the Kanye, you know, anti-Semitism stuff or just talk in general about anything to do with it just shows, kind of says a lot about him and maybe is a really good lesson for kids coming up in terms of how to navigate the scene because I've seen this post courtesy of Pharrell that kind of bummed me out a little bit, right? Because he's clearly trying to um, distance himself from Kanye and trying to make it known that he's not supporting any of Kanye's comments. But essentially, this post that he posted on his Instagram story where he reshared a post from somebody else, it's not even his own post that he actually typed with his own fingers. It's something that he reshared and it says um, words on a, on a square screen. Um, I support my Jewish friends and the Jewish people, which is a bit of an empty statement. It doesn't actually say, say, say anything. It's the most vogue it's the most vagus of the vagues it's up there with that black square during black lives matter protest but it does nothing to really further the question the conversation and it also does nothing to really draw a line in the sand because all these people essentially for the most part um don't really want to come out especially the prominent people within the scene or the industry don't really want to come out and say anything kind of like final or kind of out there about Kanye because they know how that ends. Look at what happened to Ambush. Look what happened to, you know, to flipping Tremaine and stuff. If you come out there hard at him, he's definitely going to be willing to fight back and get back at you. And also they don't want to spoil or kind of tarnish their relationship with the guy because they're all probably feeling like how Adidas feel where they're, they're hoping this will pass and soon he'll be on his apology tour, Kanye, you know, now he's on his bigotry tour, but they're hoping soon the apology tour will come and he'll see sense and he'll see the way and everyone will be back to making money and sucking clout from him. That's essentially what they're doing because I refuse to believe, I refuse to believe that this Kanye is a new version of Kanye. There were elements of this guy's personality that existed back in the day when everyone was sucking him off and helping him design invitations for Yeezy and doing all this sort of stuff and being happy to be at the Wyoming show and showing off that they were there and wearing the shirt and showing the invites and all this kind of clout chasey stuff and, you know, that people do in general. People are willing to suck off and show and big up their relationship with him. But now he's spiraling out of control and doing things to offend a huge swaths of people no one wants to say anything because they don't want to ruin reputations. Or oh, if they are saying stuff, they're saying what Pharrell's saying, which is just these vague um, nonsense kind of like wordy statements that don't really mean anything. So it might be actually helpful and beneficial for your career if you just do like Heron Preston and just keep your mouth shut because there's nothing really you can add to the conversation. If I remember correctly, there was a time maybe a few months ago, maybe a couple of years ago, where I remember Heron going on this rant on his not rent but he kind of said a few things that might be to do with his real life and he basically said what's the effect of mind your business in life just mind your business just whatever you do focus on you and mind your business because there's so many distractions out there and so many things that you should be people say you should get involved in or lend your ear to but they don't really concern you in the slightest and i think this has been something that he's kind of adopted in terms of his uh, modus operandi because I'm assuming he was very aware of the people he was working with and their controversial opinions and how they stood in culture. And instead of being that person that's people go to as like, oh, what do you think of your friend Virgil? What do you think of your friend Kanye? He never said any of that stuff. He kind of kept stirring and just kept it moving. Even the Virgil stuff, only after his passing really, did I hear her and really share a lot of stories about Virgil and really kind of be out there talking about him often. He just, you know, that was his real life friend, but he didn't feel the need to kind of be the mouthpiece for the Donda guys or the Yeezy guys. He just kind of kept himself to himself in that regard. So maybe this is something that people should adopt. And I think, again, it's admirable because the pressure must be excruciating, do you know what I mean, on their side of things to kind of say some things, you know, there's, you, I'm sure there's WhatsApp, there's group chats going around. There's probably some crazy comments going around too, but my man is keeping focused he's selling all these archive of his rare sneakers on the auction raising money he's talking to flipping Odomar Pigo however you pronounce them and obviously that's kind of gearing up for a collaboration coming up in the future and then on top of that he's also showing 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 hair and Preston spring summer 2023 um which obviously looks pretty decent and again i feel like it's an improvement each season on what he's doing and you know i may be a hp cock guzzler but i think in general 
those guys in that group don't get enough credit for basically being untrained novice amateur designers designing on the highest level just think about it from jerry lorenzo to matthew williams to heron preston to god bless the dead virgil abloh they were all people with no formal training in fashion no going to flipping fashion school and pinning stuff and doing pattern cutting and interning here doing whatever no it's all basically stuff that they've learned by osmosis and stuff that they've learned from fucking fucking around on photoshop and printing stuff with a heat press and printing stuff with a screen printer and it eventually led to this point so if anything these guys are incredibly inspiring and i feel like if you're a kid coming up whatever you decide to do doesn't you don't need to make clothes but you can't help but look at this and not be inspired because of where they came from and because of the level that they're operating at it's just incredible and like i said i feel like each hp collection look at the first to this stuff stuff has really improved and you know me knowing him briefly for a short period of time and also being a fan from outside in i can definitely say he's one of the people that surprised me the most because i never saw parent presence a fashion guy at all he was maybe more of a style guy maybe more of a communication culturally marketing ideas guy but i never really saw him or conceptual ideas in Africa. i never saw him kind of presenting his ideas through the medium of clothes in this way if anything i saw him similar to something that i'm sort of like trying to emulate which is more like of a tom Sachs approach where like you have your ideas that could be applied to clothing but they could be applied to furniture they could be applied to installations it could be applied to sculptures right do you know what i mean you could apply it to different sort of mediums but i didn't think i thought he was going to go down that route especially when he started doing that concrete block stuff and monarch all that sort of stuff you know the massive wooden table all these kind of cool things that he did that what that clock that he designed to but to go from that and to be presenting legitimate collections of clothes is pretty impressive like look at this stuff this double knee pant with the kind of chore jacket type vibe this is legit as they come with the nice gloves on it's maybe a little bit reductive, a little bit repetitive. Maybe you've seen that from other brands before, but again, it's clean. It looks like it fits great and just looks amazing overall. Um, the only thing I'm an only bit annoyed about, I think, is HP. The pricing is just, oof, it's pretty steep, man. It's pretty steep. But I guess this terms of positioning, you want your stuff to be next to the Bottega Veneta's and stuff and Balenciaga's and whatnot. You want the people who work or who buy that sort of stuff to also see your brand and think of it in the same sort of light, but it's just the pricing is a little bit too crazy for me in my opinion um but again i love all of it has he actually got a diffusion line? i'm not really too sure if there's a diffusion line but regardless it looks really cool um i also do like that most of his shows are what is it color they say right with terms of gender mix so it's not women's and men's um i do like that offering in that regard also because like i said i'd never saw him as a fashion guy so the fact that he's able to present clothes in this way it's just cool um, I'm not too sure if I'll be comfortable wearing Preston Racing just above my cock, but you know, still regardless, I love that motorcycle jacket with those big baggy jeans and the boots. The styling is pretty decent also. I wonder if he's got a new stylist involved behind the scenes to work with or it's just, a, or just means the clothes have elevated to a point where this is some way important, but I love it, man. This spring 2023 collection looks absolutely banging. I'm not going to lie. Is he still doing that, that style thing on the collar? Oh, that's a little bit yeah the only thing i'm a little bit you know kind of over in terms of that style written in the russian celeric this the cut on this jacket looks pretty decent too it's got like a u type shape here which is quite nice that kind of reveals that basketball logo on the shorts look number 16 17 nice as well graphics with a flame on it some nice big gloves these motorcycle gloves whatever they got with these exposed knuckle bits are pretty sick hopefully they're hp and not like a stock things he bought somewhere but these are really nice i like those the shoes are pretty decent too they remind me a little bit of triple s's but i like the look of them and they got hp and y as a, as a hat kind of got a twist on dk and y i wonder why um dk and y didn't kind of settle with him long term in terms of the rebrand and taking over that brand in general was it calvin klein maybe it was calvin klein i forgot which one was it calvin klein people might have been calvin klein my bad not dk and y um he should have maybe took over it full, full time going forward the heron person shirt's nice as well heron sports sorry i think he would have been definitely a better fit for it going forward instead of somebody else but yeah pretty decent altogether pretty decent but like i said before the main lesson from this as well as saying it's impossible probably 
to design collections like this that are so cohesive, so well put together. Again, you don't need to like what he does, but you can't deny that this has definitely come from somebody who's concentrating. This hasn't come from somebody who's on Twitter and interacting with whatever topical fashion Twitter topic is on the day, um, whatever controversy is happening with their friends, whatever touchstone thing that's happening in the culture. This is somebody that's definitely focused, who's going to you know factories, who's going to their studio and slogging over the minor details like the ribbing on the jacket, the cuffs, the button selections, the weight of the you know the material, the finish on it. This is the kind of thing that happens when you focus. When you focus, you do these collections and you do flipping collaborations with AP which are clearly in the works like there's no doubt about it. you know he's sitting down here with somebody from sense talking about header creative and contents because he called tom beffridge right you see him he look he looks a little bit like what's his face in it does he look a little bit like i don't know there's a lot of white guys that look like that basically in it with the long hair and the and the face but yeah regardless um big up hp for minding his business i think more people should because there's not really much you can add to this conversation of you really in it what more can you actually say that's actually going to further the conversation what other insights can you add that's going to give people an understanding of what's going on there's not really much that can be said or can be added so it's better just to kind of keep your counsel focus on you and hope hope by god that it all kind of blows away hope by god that it all blows away